My name is Yusuf Estes, the National Muslim Chaplain. With me today I have uh, one of the Palmer uh, brothers. That's <laughs> not Arnold Palmer. This is this is <laughs> Abdullah Palmer. Except I only have a little sister, so uh, all right. there's no brothers. No brothers, I see. Okay. Well, inshallah, we're going to let everybody get a look at you. There we go. Okay. Have to, we, this is one of those deals where you have to look at the monitors and just fit your head into the camera because there's no okay. such thing as cameraman in our organization. <laughs> what we're going to do, we're going <laughs> to... We're going to uh, ask you a few questions before we get started with our program today. I'm going to ask you, Abdullah, what was your name before you came to Islam? Uh, my name was Donald. Donald, I yeah, see. Yeah. How, how old were you when you entered Islam? Uh, when I entered Islam, let's see, I would have been, uh, I would have been about uh, 22, I believe. So then you're how old now? 26. Four years. You're a four-year-old Muslim. Right. <laughs> oh, well, that makes you at least a toddler anyway, doesn't it? <laughs> Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. So um, now what we want to do is find out a little bit about just the basic thing. You were in uh, Christianity, so were you in a particular church? Uh, yes, I was in a non-denominational church. Uh, we called ourselves the Church of Christ. Um, there are many churches of Christ, but um, this was just yet another one. Uh, it's not to be confused really with the Mormons. They just consider themselves non-denominational. Okay. Did, uh, the, while you were there, did uh, you get really interested in religion? Uh, I sure did. I mean, I was a Methodist before that. But then when I entered the church, I got baptized into it. Um, I got very active, and then they made me the uh, leader of the campus region for Northern Virginia. Really? Of the church, yeah. Well, let me ask you this question then. Uh, uh, did you have any particular activities that you did there with the church? Uh, mainly like Christian Dawah. Yeah. Uh, mostly. I was also the discipler. What is, okay, tell us what's a discipler. Uh, I've, been, I've been waiting to ask you that question. I have it in my notes. <laughs> I want to know, what's a discipler? Tell us. Okay. Um, basically what a discipler does is they're the leader of a group of people. Okay. Um, so to speak. Um, there are a certain amount of uh, men in, who go to either Northern Virginia Community College or go to uh, George Mason University, and I basically help them with problems. I help them adjust to school through the church, and they also confess their sins to me. I just can't imagine people coming to you and telling you, you know what, last week I stole a car or I ripped somebody <laughs> off or I cheated a guy or you know I was looking at these girls I shouldn't have been looking at <laughs> <laughs> all right so you know all right discipler huh that's it is there anything yes, else you did as a discipler uh, well I was the head of the campus region so what I would do is try to um, organize different events also you know whether it's going out to the park, playing basketball, okay. and getting everyone together. Or also, I, I led Bible studies uh, once a week at George Mason University. Oh, oh, and okay. Well, you're still going over there, aren't you, George Mason? I sure am, yeah. Well, mashallah. You're on the seven-year program. <laughs> seven-year program. <laughs> this is a new program. It's not a good program. Don't, you shouldn't stay on that one. <laughs> I'm going to ask you now, now Abdullah Palmer with me now, a formal discipler from the Church of Christ, one that people used to go to you and, and ask to have their sins forgiven, right? Did, no. No? no that was Did, they had to tell you their sins. Right. <laughs> right? Right. I would try to give them advice on how to not do that again. On how to not know. So you're like a counselor, right? Kind of like that, right. But you had to listen to all the trash first, huh? Yeah, they had to tell me. That was the rule. They had to tell me all those things. Oh! And to be honest with me. So. Yeah. I, I guess you've had an earful a number of times. Uh, a few times, yeah. Yeah. So. Wish, wishing you weren't there. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Sometimes. Well, a lot of times I don't, I don't know what to tell them. So. Yeah. 
All right. Now, let let me ask you this. When you were reading the Bible did, and for yourself, did you ever come across verses or passages from the Bible that made you say, what is that? Uh, yes, I did. Um, but Tell one, me, let's t I want you to talk about that a little bit. Okay. The uh, first one that I ever came up with, and I was actually just when I was very young. Okay. And it was in uh, Genesis chapter 32, I believe where um, God is supposedly comes down to earth and he wrestles with prophet uh, Yacoub. Yes, uh, Jacob. Um, Jacob. That's right. And, you see, I was a Christian, so I did believe that God came down as a man. That was my belief that Jesus was God, um, but I didn't understand why God lost the fight. Um, <laughs> he wrestled Jacob. <laughs> Exactly. That makes Jacob a better God than God, right? I, I think, it, think God could take him. You know? <laughs> Especially if you consider the fact Jacob was, his whole life story was he was running, running from his brother Esau. Yeah. He was afraid his brother Esau That's could beat good. him That's up. That's a good point. I never thought about that. But when yeah. God came, he could still... Yeah, if he could whip God, God. <laughs> why, did, why was he so afraid? Even after he whips God, he goes back and he's uh, still afraid of his brother. He's offering all kind of... Peace offerings and lambs and and right. wives and kids, all kind of stuff to him. It sent people ahead of him just to see, you know, if they would. It's amazing. You got a point. Right. Then um, there were other things that uh, this is one of the things that bothered my parents a little bit. Is, um, we talked about it a little bit earlier in uh, Jeremiah, yeah, uh, chapter ten, you know, verse one through four. It says, "Do not do as the pagans do." So it starts out in verse one. All right. And it says, the pagans chop down a tree from the forest, and then they bring it into their homes. And then they put screws into it to make it stand up straight like a palm tree. Yeah. And then they adorn it with silver and gold. And then in verse 5, it compares this act to pagan worship. And so, I mean, as a Christian, I knew, you know, every December 25th, or before that, even before Thanksgiving sometimes, we would have a, uh, you know, Christmas tree in our house. And we did exactly that. We adorned it with silver and gold, uh, put it up in that way. And then as I kind of studied other things besides the Bible, I found out there's a lot of pagan um, practices, uh, such as Christianity and, um, I'm sorry, not Christianity, but Christmas and uh, Easter also has a lot of different pagan practices within it. Um, so I was wondering where the bunny came from and the eggs and things like that when I was a kid. Did you learn? Uh, I did, yes. What did you find out? Well, it was a fertility um, <laughs> celebration. <laughs> it's exactly right. <laughs> you know what the name of it was called? The Feast of Ishtar. Uh, Feast of Ishtar. It was called the Feast of Ishtar. And they had a goddess by the name of Ishtar. And they, what they used to do is to build this phallic symbol. You know what that is? No. It represents a male organ. I see. Oh. Okay. And they put this big post representing the male organ. And then they would walk around this thing or dance around it and so on and so on without their clothes on. Okay. <laughs> and it gets worse. And then these eggs represented fertility, and rabbits, which reproduce a lot, you know, really quickly, represent fertility. And so that's what they did. They used these symbols to represent fertility and hoping that the women would get pregnant and they would have babies. 
Right. I also figure that's why they do it in springtime too, when everything's blooming. Really uh, amazing. <laughs> yes. That's again, you know, a, a, a teaching in the Bible which is still preserved to some extent, even in the English translations, interpolations, and interpretations. Because you look at it and you say. It still says, essentially, though, first commandment, thou shalt not have any other gods beside me. So this now brings us to the point of the whole thing that I want to mention before we go any farther, because a lot of people think, oh, you Muslims, you're attacking the Bible. You don't have any right to do that. What if we attack the Quran? Well, first of all, if you're a Christian or a Jew, you don't have any business. A Jew has no business attacking the Bible, the New Testament. Okay. Because he doesn't believe in it. Okay, right. It's not yours to talk about. I mean, why well, you don't talk about the Hindu Sanskrits. Mm -hmm. You don't go out here and talk about the Buddhist work or the Confucius people or any of the rest of them. So why would a Jew keep, and I've noticed this many times, a lot of Jews write books about the New Testament. Have you ever noticed that? Telling, the, telling right. Christians how to think about their own book. Right. That's amazing because they don't even believe in it. <laughs> Tell them how, how they should perceive Jesus and they don't believe in Jesus. Am I right? Right. So I'm going to say the same thing to the Christians. You don't believe in Muhammad. You don't believe in Allah. You don't believe in the, in the Quran. So where do you come from attacking us? <laughs> and if you said, no, no, you should try to attack us. Nope. Oh, excuse me. We, like the Christians, have the right to look what came before us. Right. Christians can look at the Old Testament and say this came before us, right? Correct. But we accept it because Jesus endorsed it. The famous statement in the book of Matthew, chapter 5, verse 17. You remember that? Correct. Think not that I came to destroy the law and the prophets. To preserve it. I came not to destroy, but to fulfill. Fulfill. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Is that right or wrong? No, that is right. I, like I told you, it's been four years. Not, you know. Well, but he said, I came to fulfill the law and the prophets, and not until all these things are accomplished, so even one dot or jot or iota of the law be in any wise lessened. And whoever breaks the least commandment and teaches that, he'll be in the hellfire, or in the least in the kingdom, which is, of course, hell. And then the one who keeps the commandments and teaches that, he'll be the highest in the kingdom. Is that right? Correct. And then he keeps on going and he says, and unless your righteousness exceeds that of these Pharisees who were the religious leaders at the time, unless your righteousness exceeds that, you're not going to paradise. That's what it says. So, the Christians have a right to look back to the Old Testament because Jesus endorsed it. Am I right or wrong? You're right. So they have a right to look at it, whereas those who don't believe in the Bible don't have a right to look at it. Correct. Not from that standpoint. All right, now, what about the Muslims? Look how the Quran begins. The beginning of the Quran. A'udhu billahi min shaitani rajim, bismillahi rahman rahim, alif lam mim. Dhaliku kitabu la raibufi, hudilu mutikin, aladini yukminun bil gharibi, wa yukminun salata, wa mimma razakna humyun fikun, wa aladini yukminun... Bima unzila ileka wa ma unzila min kabli. Okay, what does that mean? It's, it says alif lam min. This is the book wherein there is no doubt a source of guidance for those who what? They make taqwa for Allah. They're God fearing people. They believe in the unseen, they establish worship, they pay charity. And they believe in what's being sent to Muhammad and they believe in what was sent down before, peace be upon him, they believe in what was sent down before, meaning to all the prophets. And it tells us also in the Quran, over and over and over, about the Bible, the Bible, the Bible, calls it the book. And what does Bible mean? It means book. It means book. Right. It exactly. Means it, it means a book. Right. <laughs> it comes from the Kone Greek word, Biblios. Correct. Which means book. And so Allah calls it kitab, which is Arabic for? Book. There you go. So it is the right of the Muslim to look at the Bible and ask, does the Bible still contain what it originally had? The real Bible came from where? It came from uh, Allah. 
Of course. All revelation came from Allah. Everything that came down from every prophet, from Adam and Moses and Solomon and Jesus and Muhammad and all the other prophets in there, peace be upon all of them, every single one of them came with one message. One message. Worship God. Don't worship what He created. Does that make sense? Makes perfect sense. Worship Allah. Don't worship what He created. Put it down in just one simple sentence so the country folks like us can understand it. Worship God. Don't worship what he made. And how did he say it? He said it in words that the people understood at the time. Then the people preserved it for a while, but then others tried to interpolate it and interpret it and translate it and, 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 and we wind up with abrogation, falsehood, mixed up contradictions, errors and all the rest of it. And that's what these books are dealing with. But from the Muslim perspective, we're not saying there's anything wrong with the Bible. You know what we're saying? There's something wrong with what these people are calling the Bible because it's not the Bible. The Bible was not revealed in English. There was no English language. Correct. Or was there? No, there was not. Did Moses speak English? No. I don't think so. Solomon? No. Peace be upon him. Jesus, peace be upon him? No. No. So, if you want to know the text, you have to go to the original language. So, it means you've got to go back to the, either the Hebrew or the Aramaic or any of the Semitic language that it was revealed in and then read it. But then you'd have to find an original copy. Right, because they didn't speak Greek either. True. So, here's what we're bottom line. We're saying this, that... We, as Muslims, we love the Bible. And we wish you would be more true to the real Bible and not accept these corrupted versions. And if you really want to know what the Bible says, read the Quran. Right. Because a lot of the, yes, a lot of the Bible is still preserved in the Quran. A lot tells you, this is what was said. That is what was said. You want to know what was said? Read the Quran and find out. Right. And then realize that Islam is not any different than the religion that came with Jesus and Moses and all the prophets before. They only said one thing. You know what they said? They said, worship God, don't worship what he created. <laughs>